Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalee Zedan. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and we're going to end off tonight with a match between Snuggle Base and Failthos on Akalan Wastelands. I've been warned a little bit about this game, but frankly, this is Tuesday, and Tuesday is more the rougher game night. If it were Saturday, I'd be a bit apprehensive, but it's Tuesday. So, Tuesday is more when I do things that are a little bit, you know, lower elo players, or newer players, or games that aren't quite so well played. Just, you know, you gotta have that too. It's good to have games that are super well expertly played, and you also need to have the contrast. Or, just for the case of newer and lower, lower elo players, games where advice can be more useful. Anyhow... Snuggle Base and Failthos both going for gunships right out of the gate. Failthos going very early for Blastwing, just to get a bit of damage in. And Snuggle Base, however, going for early Banshee into Blastwing themselves. Though, that first Blastwing is going to be a pain in the butt. Kind of locking down Snuggle Base's gunship plan for a little bit. I mean, this map, I mentioned before, it's kind of become just gunship heaven. Which makes sense. It's a huge map. I mean, Ravage is a map which is almost gunship heaven. And this map is very similar to Ravaged, but just that little bit bigger, that gunships basically aren't easily countered at all. There have been some patches, or not patches yet, there are some changes to cranes in the next patch. Basically, gunships will get a heavier, but more expensive crane that moves slower, that'll make it harder to expand. That might help, but I think it's mostly in this case just because gunships are fast, don't care about the cliffs, and can pretty much deal with anything. So, unless you go for gunships yourself and are able to basically counter mobility for mobility, there's not much hope. So, Felthaus getting hit early on, losing a bit of their energy production as well with wind generators. Snuggle Base, on the other hand, they went for solar plants, so blast wings would be a little bit inconvenient, but nowhere near as damaging. Still, it looks like both players have managed to keep their base more or less pristine, taking a bit of damage each. Both of them have taken a Blastwing to the face and have weathered it, though Felthos a little bit further behind economically. But mostly Snuggle Base is just pushing their expansions a little bit faster. Felthos more focused on repair, more focused on getting the defenses up, not focused as much on getting all the metal extractors right away. Excuse me. <coughs> so that's presenting a bit of a challenge economically. But I think it'll work out okay. I mean, this is a game, like, this is not, I mentioned last game, I wouldn't build wind generators unless we're talking 0.7 to 2.5. Well, we're talking 0.7 to 2.5, so I totally agree with Failthos building those wind gens, uh, except for the fact that he's playing against, or they're playing against gunships. If it were against pretty much any other factory, I would say, yeah, wind gens, except maybe air. Phoenixes are, Phoenixes kill wind gens, very hard. But gunships do as well. Blast Wings, we just saw deal a lot of damage and get a few good rapiers in there and they just rip them to shreds. So, as much as wind generators are the most cost-effective option by far, they're also highly vulnerable. If it were against any bot factory, I would say wind generators all the way. Fill up the main base with wind generators. If they get in far enough to deal enough damage that it matters, you have bigger problems like your opponent's entire army inside your main base. Granted, Snuggle Base is lower down, so for them, it's not as useful. Like, here it's 0.4 to 2.5, which is a little bit below what I consider the edge of usefulness, and the top level is 0.7. Right here is 0.1, so solar plants make a lot of sense here for Snuggle Base. But yeah, just, that defensibility is a big deal. At any rate, Felthos, not really building a lot military right now. Getting a few cranes. These are, like I said, these are the older cranes. These aren't the newer, weaker, more, sorry, the newer... Not weaker, actually stronger, but more expensive cranes. Not the heavier cranes. So, I don't know if that'll make a difference. I'm curious to see if it will, but it'll take a couple months to shake out. So, we won't, we won't really know until probably August, assuming the patch for that releases sometime in the next couple weeks. August will be the earliest we'll know about it. Well, at least earliest we'll be able to really draw any conclusions. At any rate, looks like, is Snuggle Base going for another factory? Because this caretaker is pretty far away, and there's no reclaim to be spoken of, so this looks like another factory, potentially. It's a very odd place to put a caretaker. On the other hand, Felthos is expanding themselves, but way behind Snuggle Base. Their economy is quite a bit behind. They are getting a few Banshees up, and if... 
Oh, they cannot position themselves right. They tr trying for the exp the expansion raids, but those tridents are just too much, too much in the way. That's not gonna work, I'm afraid. Good plan though. But it looks like Snuggle Base has the air defense pretty much on lock. This is where I would say we could probably see Failsass go for ground switch because that many tridents. Every trident there is one more non anti air non anti ground unit. And given their cost, that's basically every trident's one fewer Banshee, or even one fewer Rapier. Which means it becomes, it becomes that much more useful to build up ground at this point, except for, you know, the speed. But other than the speed problem, it becomes that much more useful to build ground. And really, bandits, glaives, scorchers, like, they all all pretty fast. Not gunship fast, but still pretty fast. But it looks like we're going to be stuck with... No, never mind. Feltos is going for a shield bot factory. So we are going to see something. What are they going to go for, though? Probably bandits, given the size of the map. I don't imagine they're going to go for anything else. So they might go for vandals for a little bit more anti-air. But I think... I think we're going to just see bandits. I think that's it. At this point, Snuggle Base is getting more and more rapiers, though. It's going to be harder. Like, Snuggle Base does have a mostly anti-air force, but... This is really where Vandals would be handy. But I think Bandits are what we're going to go for because I'm pretty sure Failtoss is thinking, I see them going, I see Failtoss is going, sorry, I see Snuggleways is going for anti-air, I'm going to go for ground so the anti-air can't deal with my ground units. Which isn't a bad idea. But it's a little risky. Because any anti-ground that does come up is going to have pretty much a field day, just on account of there not being a whole lot to counter it. Although, admittedly, one of the rapiers is already down, the second rapier about to die. That was really unlucky positioning for Snuggle Base there. Just happened to be just in the right spot that both rapiers died at the cost of one trident. That was actually really good positioning on... I mean, I don't know if it was good or lucky, but Felthos, they got a lot of value there. Two tridents and two rapiers... I mean, granted, it's the cost of their entire air army, so that was tricky, but still. The Rapier's the real target. And there's only one up right now, and the rest of it is Vandals. Okay, so we are getting Vandals. Felthos does want to make sure they can deal with the air from the ground. But also Tridents, so both air-to-air -air and ground-to-air. At this point, Snuggle Base is the one who'd be best served by going for a ground switch. If they went for a ground switch, given that Felthos, while they have ground, is going for entirely anti-air... This would be dead to any raider forces that come in. Like, any any ground-to-ground -ground raider forces. And Felthos... Okay, they're not really going to focus on this Banshee. They're going to focus more on the attacking force. Just thinking this Banshee right here could be used to attack in the upper plateau. And not much would deal with it. Not quickly enough, anyway. Oh, I'm kind of surprised... I'm just surprised Feltas is not targeting that Rapier here, because the Rapier really is the threat. Like, yeah, I know. Tridents are also a threat, but Tridents are only a threat to other gunships. The Rapier is a threat to the Bandits. Because, I mean, really, that's the thing. Feltas wants to go for ground, so that Snuggle Base has to either switch to ground, which they are, to Spider Factory, which is actually the problem. Because now Snuggle Base realizes, oh, hey, ground game's on? I'm going to go ground game. And that means Feltas has to deal with that. And like I said, Feltas has entirely got an anti-air army right now, getting a few bandits, but otherwise entirely anti-air. While Snuggle Base, they're mostly anti-air, but they do have the Rapier. They do have now a ground army coming in that's anti-ground, though admittedly it's only fleas, but against anti-air? Who cares? Fleas will rip them to shreds. Like, the Vandals will have no chance. And the bandits starting to get up for protection, but we need a few of them. Those fleas are fast. Anyway, overall map control. Looks like Snuggle Base basically has the entire western side. They do have a small economic advantage, 27 metal. But they also look like they're getting the northeast as well, which Felthos needs if they want to stay in the game. While Snuggle Base just expanding like mad. I mean, Snuggle Base will probably have about 50 metal within a minute. And Felthos getting some good value trades here. But unfortunately, those fleas, that, they're coming in. They're dealing... I mean, that bandit's helping. The bandits are really helping, but there's still going to be some problems. I mean, have we lost... That's a flea. Let's try it in. Looks like the vandals have been lucky so far. 
And actually, it looks like there might be enough bandits that... Oh, are there? Most of the bandits are back here. I mean, once there is enough bandits, then yeah, the fleas will have no chance. And it looks like in this small group, there are enough bandits. Provided there... Well, just, more so, there are not enough fleas to deal with the vandals quickly enough that the bandits can't just wreck them. Is Snugglebase going to switch? No, Snugglebase is still going for Flea. Flea Trident with a Cloakybot switch, or Cloakybot addition as well. Not switch, but adding Cloakybot on top of that. And now Snugglebase caught out. Feldoss actually getting some, some mileage out of these forces here. The commander won't... No way, those are just Tridents. The commander is actually going to have a really hard time. Force into the water. Not the ideal situation, but hey, that's still not bad. Get it out of the way, get it. Stop it from building, stop it from reclaiming. Unfortunately, these fleas are posing a threat. Actually, they're being a pain. Being a real pain. Surprisingly so, and glaives coming up for the actual threat. I mean, the fleas are a pain, but the glaives are going to actually cause problems to the point of destroying pretty much everything Felthas has if Felthas is not careful. And this, oh boy, this is where the Vandals are going to have potentially all the problems. But it looks like, no, those fleas are entirely being used for base assault. Really? That seems like suicide. I'm not sure what Snuggle Base is planning on doing there. And very smart here. Felthos setting up just so that Snuggle Base's commander jumps back the way they came. But that's assuming that Snuggle Base jumps their commander back the way they came and doesn't jump it over to this coastline or just walk it all the way around the entire map and go back home. Because it's a commander. It's amphibious. It can just walk. It can go anywhere. It can go along any of these coastlines and jump back. It doesn't have to jump back the way it came. But Snuggle Base seems unconcerned. I think they're just thinking, well, my commander's safe. Keep him out of the way. Which is probably fine. I mean, the commander's not getting any reclaim, but they're also not getting dead. So... Still providing that 4 metal and 6 energy. But the glaive... Ooh, how much... What does Feltas have for Tridents? It looks like not much. Yeah, 3 or so. With Snuggle Base having 13. Wherever they are. Oh, there they are. Still, looks like Feltas is pretty much getting... They're getting forced back somewhat. I mean, I did say... Didn't notice Snuggle Base took this. Didn't get the 50 metal I expected, though. But they did take the northeast... Actually, they might have, because it looks like a lot of damage has been dealt, so they did actually probably get it. And now, Venom Glaive, which... Is that going to be that useful? I mean, Venom's a pain because it gets rid of the shields and, of course, EMP. But the main problem, I think, here is the composition of Thugs is not suited for dealing with anything else than maybe the Venoms. And even then, not really. Certainly not suited for dealing with the Glaives. I'm a bit surprised it's not Thug Law. Or Thug Law, Ro Thug Law Rogue. Like, Thug Law Rogue would be able to just manage that no problem, but... Pure Thug? That seems... Well, it seems like this result was unsurprising. And right now, Feltas going for more Vandals, more Rapiers. Going back to air. Interesting choice. There are still a lot of Tridents up. I mean, all these Tridents, all 13 of them belong to Snuggle Base, and there's not much damage being dealt to them. Feldhaus getting a bit of value from these bandits, getting rid of a few glaze here and there. But not enough to be able to get rid of the tridents, and that's the real prize. Getting rid of the tridents would mean that Snuggle Base would be able to just... Well, sorry, Feldhaus would be able to just use those rapiers they've been building. And actually use them with impunity, but unfortunately at this point, the tridents are a threat. Less of a threat throw, it looks like the bandits have managed to break through the glaive line. The tridents may soon fall after, but no, more glaives. Constant reinforcement of glaives from Snuggle Base. There's enough build power that it's really hard to make that go any other way. And if that was a bait, I don't think it works super well, unfortunately, for Feltos. I think Feltos was trying to bait Snuggle Base's Tridents out, but it didn't quite work out. Both players just going for Mass Raider. Mass, mass Bandit versus Mass Glaive with a little bit of gunship support, but mostly just Mass Bandit versus Mass Glaive. It's going to come... It's entirely coming down to Raider Micro. Although, Vandals are helping. Getting rid of the Tridents. If the Tridents were to go, that would give Felthos a load of free air for just getting rid of all these bandits. And that would probably allow them to break the stalemate here. 
at this point, Snuggle Base and Feldos are still pretty close. But it's getting less and less close with Hermits coming in over the eastern side. The eastern side is basically done. There's not much that'll be able to defend against this many Hermits. 15 Hermits coming in the eastern side. The Rapier's doing their best, but unfortunately for them, the Trident's about to finish them off. I feel like Felthos has kind of gotten a little bit locked in. Getting some rogues, bit of a switch, but still kind of locked in. Good read, though. I don't think they scouted out these warriors yet, but just good read because Felthos going hard in warriors, so... Sorry, Snuggle was going hard in warriors. Felthos going hard in rogues. So Felthos would win that engagement, but I think Felthos got that mainly for the Hermits. To get rid of the Hermits from range, it just so happens that Snuggle Base is making an entire army countered by rogues. The problem, however, for Felthos is that part of that army is all-terrain on a map with a lot of choke points, and the other part of that army is just completely on the opposite side of the map. So right now, those rogues, they'll probably help with the Hermits, but they're probably not going to help too much with the Warriors. Still more harassment coming in for Felthos, but Snuggle Base's economy is way too healthy for that to matter. Like, at this point, it'll help, it's good, but there's a lot of money that Snuggle Base has right now. And Felthos would have to break pretty much everything in order to get out of it. Given that Snuggle Base themselves, their Snuggle Base is just tearing apart Felthos's base, Felthos doesn't even have the option of getting through, they've got to defend. I mean, good rating over here, but I mean the north, the north side. That's where the attack needs to happen. That's the weakest part that Snuggle Base has. That's where Feldhouse can do the most damage. South is, southwest is not bad, but it's not great. Like, it'll be at most 5 metal per second drop down at this point. Whereas over here, that's 10. No, no, 8. Sorry, that wasn't taken. But still, 8. 8 metal per second. Which wouldn't quite be parity yet. But yeah, this is coming in. This is going to be a problem. Snuggle Base has pretty much been entirely running off of just numbers. And I feel like this entire game has been a lot of... Oh, except for, except for that. Feldos has been getting a lot of value a lot of the time, but that was not the case. That was really not the case. And Snuggle Base's commander in the water actually not even bothering to jump out, just building a beachhead of lotuses. Maybe they'll jump out to try to use that beachhead to just defense crawl inside of Feltos' main base. But I mean, Feltos has lost a lot of their economy. They've lost pretty much their main base. They're starting to lose their main base. I mean, this is being broken up, but still, that's a lot of... That's pressure on all sides. That's very distracting. That's hard to deal with. I'm actually kind of impressed they're doing as good a job as they are of dealing with it, but... Rather difficult. Are managing to get rid of a lot of Snuggle Base's forces, though. These Trident numbers are getting thinned out heavily. Snuggle Base not even paying attention to that. Much more focused on the Warriors, whose numbers are also being thinned out. And it looks like we're just going to see a lot of Rapiers now. But not that many so far. No, Snuggle Base seems mostly focused on building up their economy. And, okay, there we go. I'm thinking, there's got to be a Strider Demi Strider. There is! There's the Crow! There we are. It's like, I was wondering where the Crow was. Because there had to be one. Nothing's been built. This line of warriors stopped. Feltos might be suspicious of this. They should be. It's like, when your opponent's streaming in units at you and the unit stream suddenly stops, that's when you know they have something huge behind it, and you've got to prep for that somehow. Although, against a crow, I don't know. These rogues... They'll be of some help, but not much. D-Gun's gonna drop now. No, no. Is it not gonna drop now? There it goes. Okay, there's the D-Gun. And that... That crow only lost a thousand health. The warriors are the real target for these rogues, though. But unfortunately, no vandals up, no tridents up, no easy way to gain rid of air. And the hermits inside of Feldos' base just finishing that off, too. Snuggle base finally ballsy enough to get their commander up on solid ground, or on dry ground, at least. And that's gonna be it. Feldos being hit on all sides. That's definitely Rust. I hope to see Felthos practice a lot more, though, because Felthos is an awesome player. I really enjoy watching them play. Hopefully they get... they shake that Rust off, because it'll be... I'd like to see this match again, like on this map or whatever, a match like this again, with Felthos with the Rust off. That would be amazing. This is still pretty good, actually. It's, I mean, admittedly, my expectations were a little bit tempered. But this is still pretty good. It's just that there were some clear 
issue, like, clear mistakes, I suppose, but mostly I think it was just that there was... Maybe just not enough in the right place at the right time. I mean, Fail Thoughts mentioned they kind of wish they built more Vandals. I can totally see that. I can totally see that desire because that would have helped a lot. But yeah, overall, that game was pretty much just a gradual win for Snuggle Base. I think it's. Not, I think the thing is, if Fail Thoughts had taken the north side and managed to hold the north side, northeast side, it would have been a much more even game. But it wasn't taken early on because Feldoth got a lot of harassment in early on. If they had taken that north side instead of Snuggle Base, they would have had an economic advantage, I think, or it would have been parity. So it would have been a lot easier to deal with that. And then getting rid of the Tridents would have been easier because it would have had more anti air to work with as well as more ground. I still think probably would have been a good idea to just go for bandits and not even go for the, tri the, va the Vandals first. The Vandals are great, but the problem was that it revealed the ground switch when it was just weak anti-air rather than when it was either super strong anti-air to wipe out all the gunships or loads of ground units that the tridents can't deal with that are able to just rush into the base and deal a lot of damage. Kind of feel like that was the worst of both worlds. But I don't think that really affected the game's outcome too much. I think that that was like that was a good idea. It wasn't a terrible idea. It didn't it wasn't the thing that broke Feldhaus's back. I think really it was not having this northeast set of mexes. I think it was the fact that this was Snuggle Bases, and Snuggle Base was able to hold on to that most of the game, and Failtoss wasn't able to hold on to these. That that Hermit attack is pretty much the thing that broke it. Everything else, everything else after that was just the economic advantage manifesting. Anyway, that is it for me tonight, so I hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.